All right, so we have talked about um, linear regression and uh, ridge regression, and these are actually regression tasks, uh, but we're going to talk about uh, logistic regression, which is actually a classification technique. Um, so in order to convert the uh, real numbers into uh, classes, um, things become not as linear as they were, right? So um, this is um, uh, the introduction to something that is not 100% linear. Uh, so you could think of this as the simplest nonlinear model. And uh, if you consider a uh, multi-layer perceptron structure, or a MLP, this is really just the building block, uh, the simplest building block of an MLP network. Um, and this is sometimes referred to as a single neuron. And obviously, as we have talked earlier, um, the human neuron is like uh, maybe a thousand times more complex than this. So the human biological neuron um, it really does not map to a single neuron that we have here. Um, but this is kind of a, a neural network terminology that has been adopted by a lot of people. So we're gonna try to we're gonna still use the terminology uh, while keeping in mind that uh, there is a big difference between the computational um, approach versus the biological neuron, right? So uh, as uh, as said, um, logistic regression is kind of the simplest nonlinear model. Um, it is uh, sometimes still referred to as a generalized linear model because this still gives you a linear decision boundary. A decision boundary is something that separates the two different classes. For example, I could have um, some circles and crosses uh, that represent two classes. And if I want to have a linear decision boundary, that means the decision boundary is a straight line, uh, which is something like that. Alternatively, if I do not have a linear decision boundary, I could do something like that, or even something that is kind of zigzag. Uh, so it's something uh, like that. And those are all valid decision boundaries. Um, but for the in the case of a logistic regression, the decision boundary is always a straight line. And uh, that's that's what we have here. Uh, so, uh, but the model function itself does have some nonlinearity. So you cannot really use what you use for optimizing a linear model to optimize the logistic regression model. Um, so uh, we're gonna look at, again, the supervised learning recipe that we have talked about um, a couple of times already. Um, so, uh, the first step is to collect some data. And the data for logistic regression is going to be a little different from the data we have uh, for linear or ridge regression um, in the sense that uh, the Y is going to change. Now, the X is the same. It is still a P vector or a P dimensional vector with P features, right? And for the y, for the output variable, um, we are going to only have two possible or two legal values. And these are either uh, one or zero. So we have two classes. Uh, one is denoted by zero, the other is denoted by one. And that is uh, what we're training the class, uh, the, the model to predict. Right. So given any input X, the model will have to classify the input to one of the two classes. Um, so we have we do have a little difference in the data uh, that we feed to the model. The second step um, in the supervised learning recipe is that we do have to specify a particular functional form uh, for the model that we're trying to fit. Right. So in this case, the uh, functional form is the following. So we still have um, the beta times xi uh, formulation. Um, so if we wanted to uh, include an offset, right, these both will be 
uh, p plus one uh, dimensional. Um, so we could have, you know, we're going from beta one to beta p and beta zero, uh, which uh, is uh, beta zero is the offset or the bias. Okay, so this is so far this part is exactly uh, the same as we had for linear regression. Um, you could choose sometimes even for linear regression, you could choose to get rid of the bias uh, beta zero. Uh, uh, but this is this is like a design choice. Now the difference, uh, the main difference between logistic regression and uh, linear regression is this thing. Uh, the sigma. Um, the sigma is known as an activation function. Okay. Um, we could have, we could use different types of activation functions, but for logistic regression, there is a classic choice, um, which is the following, right? So um, one over one plus e uh, to the power of negative z, where z is the input to this function. Okay. If you multiply uh, e to the power of z on both the numerator as well as the denominator, you get to something like this, right? So uh, e over z, e to z over one plus e to z. So this function has a name um, that is known as the sigmoid function. Okay, so this is one of the most classic function that people use in um, machine learning. Um, and the reason for that is um, that it has a special property that is really convenient uh, for machine learning um, in that it squashes all the real number input. So from negative infinity to positive infinity, anything on the real number line um, gets squashed into a finite range, which is from zero, so there should be open intervals, uh, from zero to one, okay? So this should be an open interval, um, which means you never actually get to zero or one, um, but you can get as close as you want. Uh, so this is known as the squash function, and it is particularly good for binary classification because, uh, you know, um, we wanted to we wanted to predict either zero or one, right? We wanted to we want our uh, predictions to be uh, one of the two numbers. Um, so uh, in practice, uh, we can use a cutoff point or a threshold, say zero point five. You know, so anything uh, if my output is anything above zero point five, I would consider the prediction to be one. And if the input falls below 0 0.5, I would consider the output to be zero, right? So this is um, a uh, function uh, particularly good for binary classification. And another interpretation for the output of the sigmoid function uh, is that we can use that to denote the probability uh, for uh, the output to belong to the one class. Right, so if you have, uh, you know, something like, uh, I don't know, zero point seven, um, you could say, you know, we have seventy percent confidence uh, that uh, the data point X belongs to uh, the first class or the class denoted by the number one. Okay, so they could be understood as a probability as well. Um, so after that, after we define the model we have to define a loss function, okay? So in this loss function, this is known as the cross entropy loss, okay? So this is what the function looks like. Um, we have uh, two things, uh, yi without the hat is the ground truth label, whereas yi hat with that you know little hat um, denotes the prediction of our model and um, it's a, it's a uh, scalar between zero and one in an open interval. So uh, the cross entropy loss is the following. So this is the term, uh, the mathematical 
equation, uh, a formula for each data point i, and we sum them over all data points and compute the uh, average, right? So, so this part we'll we'll uh, ignore for the moment because this is really just uh, taking the average over all data points. So we're just going to look at the rest, right? So there's a minus sign, there's yi and log yi hat plus one minus yi times log one minus yi uh, yi hat. So that is kind of uh, the the equation. Now um, we wanted to look closely at the functional form. We see that uh, both yi and one minus yi appear in this equation. However, we know that the label is either zero or one. So really what happens is you only have one of the two things. If yi is equal to one, then you would have the first term. And one times anything is still uh, that then. So it doesn't, so you really have just log one, sorry, log uh, y i hat. If in the other case, y i is equal to zero, then we wouldn't have, um, if y i is equal to one, then one minus y i will be zero. So the second term will disappear. If However, yi is equal to zero, then the first term uh, will disappear and we will have the second term as y minus yi is gonna be one. Um, so we're going to have the second term log of y minus yi hat, right? So you can see for each data point, for the i data point, only one of the two terms will exist in the summation. So um, we wanted to, we wanted to, well, before I do that, maybe I will talk about uh, what happens when when you say, let's say uh, yi, uh, the ground truth value is one. Uh, so we will have this term, but not this term. And this can be safely ignored because one times any number is that number, right? So if this is the particular loss term for my data point i, and I'm trying to minimize uh, my loss, and that is equivalent to me the equivalent to minimize log y hat i. Okay, so uh, remember uh, log is a monotonic function. So to minimize uh, negative log y i is to maximize log y i hat, which is also the same as maximizing y hat i, right? So if that, so this is telling you that if my ground truth label is one, the optimization will maximize, will make this as big as possible. And the biggest value, the upper bound, for the output is one. So the optimization will try to push the y i hat value as close to one as possible. Okay, so that is the case when the output is uh, one, when the desired output on the label is one. Now let's say the desired output on the label is zero, then we don't have the first term, uh, but we will have the second term and we can safely ignore the one, and so we will basically be maximizing or minimizing negative log y minus y i hat. And this is equivalent to maximizing, as we saw, maximizing y minus y i hat. And the same, is, this is the same as minimizing y hat i. Okay, so with that, we can see if the ground truth label is zero, then the optimization algorithm will try to push up the output of the model to its lower bound and the lower bound is zero. So it will try to push the output to uh, as close to zero as possible. 
although uh, you can never really reach zero, right? Because zero is uh, because this is a like an open interval. Okay, so um, there is the question: Why um, do you call this the cross entropy? We talked about the cross entropy loss. Uh, sorry, we talked about the idea of the cross entropy when we uh, talk about information theory. Uh, but uh, perhaps these things don't look exactly alike. Okay, so this is the cross entropy loss, and uh, and this is what we just saw. And uh, this is the mathematical expression for the cross entropy uh, between distribution P and distribution Q, right? So remember, um, this is like designing the uh, encoding scheme using distribution Q and then taking expectation over distribution P, okay? So, so this is, I don't know, doesn't look too similar to me, um, so we will try to reveal why uh, they are really kind of the same thing, right? So before we move on, we wanted to uh, explain what is known as a Monte Carlo expectation. So imagine we wanted to compute the expectation of a function um, that is f y, okay? Um, and this is computed over the uh, distribution p. Now, a good thing, uh, a, post, a, a euro thing to do, uh, the classic way to do this is to solve the integral, where here P stands for the PDF, and Fy is the function uh, in the expectation. And if we can solve the integral, then uh, you can easily get the expectation. But there are cases where the integral may not be very easy to do. Um, so in order to approximate the integral, uh, we could draw a number of samples, uh, let's say y1 to yk from the distribution py, okay? And if you can do that, um, we can plug in all the uh, drawn sample into the function pyi uh, and uh, take the average over all the samples. And this is um, a pretty good approximation to the uh, expectation that we look for. Okay, so we're actually exactly using that to solve our problem. Uh, and with that, we'll see how uh, or why this is uh, really a Monte Carlo expectation of the cross entropy term. Okay, so um, let's say uh, we have uh, the ground truth labels yi, and we will assume that this is drawn from an unknown distribution. Um, given x, given the input x, uh, I have a distribution over the labels, and we draw some uh, y labels uh, randomly. Okay, and we also said that the output of the logistic regression model y i hat can be understood as a probability um, that uh, the label is one. So we're going to write that as a probability distribution q, given the model parameter at the current input xi, um, the label, uh, we're gonna use the capital letter Y as the random variable, and label will be equal to one. And that probability is just the model output Yi hat. Similarly, Y minus this probability will give you um, the other possibility, right? So in the other possibility for the random variable Y uh, is zero, so uh, it's you know y minus y i hat gives you that value. Okay, with that we can try to analyze the um, cross entropy loss. And now we can see this is in here. Okay, so we know that only one of the things exists, right? So if y i oh, we have two terms here, but only one term really goes into uh, the actual computation because the other term will become zero. So let's say um, we can write things in this way, right? So we can move the negative sign inside the summation function, and we'll say, you know, if uh, x, uh, sorry, if yi is equal to one, I have this term. This term will be equal to one, and if yi uh, hat, sorry, yi is equal to zero, I have this term. Okay. So we really only have like one of the two terms. This is this delta here. Uh, is the indicator function. So um, 
it's the 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 uh let me just have z delta z is one if z is true and if it's zero if the expression z is false okay i don't uh I don't really have any constraints on Z except to say that Z is a logical expression um, whose value is Boolean, who is either which is either true or false. Okay, so so that is uh, the indicator function. Now with that, um, what I can do is I'll just really plug in um, my function value xi and yi into uh, the Q probability, and these are basically equivalent to, let me raise uh, some of these things. So this line um, is really just equivalent to uh, something here, right? So um, really it's the probability that my predicted value is equal to the ground truth value, okay? And this term, um, I can think of this term as the Fy, uh, whose expectation I am trying to compute. And if I plug in a lot of uh, xi and yi that is in my training set, um, this is a Monte Carlo expectation uh, of the following, right? The Monte Carlo estimate of the following expectation. And this is exactly the cross entropy between the two distributions, okay? so. Uh, between these distribution and this distribution, the distribution of P, uh, Y given X, and the distribution of Q, Y given X. Okay. So that is to say, um, minimizing this cross entropy loss really is minimizing the cross entropy, the information theoretical concept uh, or um, value of cross entropy between the ground truth distribution that is responsible for generating my data and the model prediction that is learned uh, by my logistic regression model, okay? So remember we also said is that when you have a cross entropy, it is related to the KL divergence. So the cross entropy of P and Q is equal to the entropy of P plus the KL divergence between P and Q. So P here, the cross, the entropy of P, the HP value is about um, the ground truth. Okay, so there's some inherent uncertainty um, in the ground truth, Y given X function, where given x this conditional distribution, that is to say, even if you know perfectly well what is your x value, given that value, there's still some uncertainty about the y value. And that's from the real world, right? That's about some data generating process uh, that we have from the real world. And there is much, there isn't much we can do about that. But uh, we have, what we do have control over is the distribution Q and we are uh, able to control that. And we are really, if you minimize the cross entropy, you're really minimizing the second term, the KL divergence between the ground truth uh, distribution, the ground truth conditional distribution versus the learned uh, distribution, right? So, so that's a good thing. That seems to really make a lot of sense. Once again, minimizing the cross entropy loss minimizes the distance between the ground truth distribution and the estimated distribution from the logistic function, from the logistic model. Okay. Um, so there is actually a uh, maximum likelihood perspective as well and you could see this as a uh, maximum likelihood estimation of the model parameter beta uh, under the binomial distribution, but uh, we will omit details 
uh, due to uh, time constraints. Anyway, um, so the last part is the model parameter beta, uh, and we want to find the parameter um, that would minimize the loss function. 